Hey guys, I realized when I talked about my depth here, I didn't really go into detail about why I was doing a depth here, so here I go. Hey everyone, this is Casper the Boy Diviner here today and I wanted to cover why I'm doing a depth year. I think I talked about the rules of what I set out uh, to do in my depth year this year in 2020, but I didn't really explain my motivations why. And when you set up for something that you want to do in the long term, or um, something that you really want to achieve in a year, Motivation is so important and not knowing why you're doing this sometimes can make it hard. I experience this with meditation for example when I get frustrated with myself. Frustration is the way that really stops you because you become very self-critical. You don't feel like you want to put in the, the time. It's kind of a deterrence. Of course you should reflect but reflection should always be free of judgement so you should be always encouraging yourself. And during meditation, when I feel distracted, I encourage myself by telling myself why I'm doing meditation, for example. And this is what I'm trying to do also with my depth year. So where's the best place to document this but on YouTube so that I hold myself accountable to everyone here. If you're interested in how I update you guys about my journey with the depth year in 2020, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. Let me know uh, what you like about this, what, what you want to know about a newcomer's view point of um, the depth year. I'll be more than happy to share, more than happy to talk to everyone about this. The first thing, I did mention this in my uh, previous video, is that I really want to create more this year rather than just consume. I think consumption is so easy nowadays and there are so many things I consume but not understand, consume and not absorb or practice and I'm hoping um, that number one, this depth, depth here will help me to create more, motivate me to create more because you know if you're putting a limit on consumption, at, at least I'll be pushed to create. Creation in what sense? I'm hoping to create more uh, YouTube videos like this, making more videos that are valuable in content. I, I know um, my video qu quality really varies from time to time. I can see it with the views, I can see it with the likes. So I'm trying my best to find a way to create uh, better things. But at the same time, I think to create something good, you need to really just push yourself in quantity as well. This is how you really reflect and find out what's the best way. Anyway, I'm veering a bit off topic here, but um, that is really one of my main drives for doing uh, Depth Year 2020, is to force myself to create more and consume less. Number two, I want to consume less, but at the same time, because I have less to consume, I do want to consume things right. I do want to make sure that I get what I need from the, the thing I'm consuming. For example, I've read so many books, but at the same time, I don't feel like I've really read many books just because I don't, I don't really absorb everything I need from the books. I don't really put into practice what I've learned. Uh, ultra learning, um, I'm reading this book, wonderful book now called uh, how to take smart notes and it's lovely and I want to put that system into practice at the same time it is so difficult and I'm hoping that the spare, the spare time I make from not consuming other things you know other new books that I download and things like that I'm hoping to use that time into proper consumption and really understanding all the things I'm actually swallowing I want to make sure that you know if I play a game uh, like Dragon Quest 11 I want to make sure that I enjoy uh, Dragon Quest 11 for what it is instead of being distracted here and there you know it's crazy, it's crazy, I've been crazy, okay, I, I don't know if, all of, if any of you are like this, but you know, I can be playing a game and watching a YouTube video at the same time and reading articles. It's crazy, I don't know how I do it, I don't know why I do it, and it just creates a very scattered mindset. Even at work nowadays, I find it hard to really focus on the task that I'm doing, and I'm hoping my depth here will allow me uh, the ability again to sit down, set a time frame, and focus and really gain something from from whatever I'm consuming. So that's the second reason why I'm doing a depth year this year. At the same time, I don't feel like my rules really cover a lot of other things. I'll be adding on to my rules as the year goes on when I feel like I'm cheating in a way so that at least I can hold myself accountable to everyone here and myself specifically. The third reason why I am doing a depth year this year is because of access. I do feel like I have not learned how to appreciate what I have. I do feel like I've accumulated things that I don't need. I've done it so much last year uh, and, and the year before and the year before even when I was young um, I had access even though I didn't feel like it I do come from a lower lower middle I do come from a lower middle class family in Singapore if you heard how I said it that is the Singapore accent even though I came from a lower middle class family my parents gave me all that I wanted all that I needed not all the time not that it was always easy to get but they did make sacrifices for me and 
Knowing that now as an adult, I feel so guilty. I feel so guilty for having that sort of access. And yet that, that, um, that desire, that want to make your life better with things is always there. I, I feel like it's, you know, it's a childhood wound where um, you, you felt like you didn't have enough or you, know, you compare yourself with others and you don't have the same things. I did go to a school where people were generally richer than, than I, uh, people who were from high income families. Not that it affected my, my view of the world badly, instead it really expanded my mind and really those people were one of the best people I've met in my whole life. In my whole life, but um, I feel like th there is that want, that 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 never-ending desire for new things that is encroaching in my life, and so I I really want to put a stop to this. There are so many things I can go into talking about just this desire. Firstly, I shouldn't be feeling guilty for what I have, but secondly, I know that a lot of things I have I don't need, so I need to really force myself to appreciate what I have instead of just accumulating, accumulating, accumulating. Instead, I should be spending more time with my family, giving them more. There are so many things I want to do and I feel like the first step, the first step that I can recognize this issue and take a control of it is to try to cut out the excess in my life, reduce the excess. And the first easiest thing to do, because it's clearly an excess, is my tarot deck collection. After the, the video that I made, I actually sat down to finally make a count. I think I was afraid of knowing how many decks I have, and it came up to 50 decks, exactly 50. And I have one more on the way, coming soon, and I can't wait for that one. That's the Bar Baba Studio one, but... The Mythical Creatures Tarot, and I can't wait for that, but... I do know that I have too many decks. I don't use everything. People have done tarot tags like Council of Seven. Why I haven't done those is just because I don't feel like I know seven decks well enough to have a defined voice to me. So I do want to try to work harder on building connections with my decks this year and that's why I set at least a limitation for the decks I'm going to buy. It's a struggle every month looking at new decks that come out or new decks that come out for pre-order. Are you guys interested in knowing what I struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis about what I want and what I, sh I know I shouldn't have? If you are, please leave a comment saying something like um, temptation. Just just type in temptation, press an enter, comment temptation. Let me know if, if you want to find out what I'm tempted by every month and how I hold myself back or why I hold myself back or if there's no reason just, just to know the struggle of, of a beautiful deck coming out that I could possibly have a great connection with but not getting it. Okay, and of course, maybe those decks that I, I, I kind of slip. I wouldn't be proud of myself, but I, I, I just want to be as transparent as I can with you guys on my journey with Depth Theory 2020. And my last reason for actually doing a Depth Theory is because I'm trying to rebuild trust with myself. I was watching one of Lavender's videos and she did cover... I don't even know what she was covering, but she mentioned the first step is to build trust with yourself. And that made me really think about how I treat my promise is to myself. When someone asks me for something, my friend telling me, um, can you do this or do that for me or can you come? I take really, I take a while to really think about it. And when I feel like I'm up to it, I agree and I don't break promises to them, you know. Um, I, I treat my friends, I treat my promises with my friends like gold. I, I don't just toss them around. And if I do ever break something, I. I really have to have a great reason for it or else if I tell you that I'll be there, I'll be there. I treat my promises to other people really seriously and yet, and yet I treat my promises to myself as not anything that important and that, that realization hurts me, you know, like when I say, okay, I'm gonna meditate 40, 45 minutes a day. I started doing 45 minutes, then it became 40 and then now I'm doing 30 minutes a day. I mean, there are you know, excuses for everything and of course sometimes it's good to give yourself a break. I think it's hard to, to promise yourself something so hard. But breaking your promise to yourself just shows you that you don't even value your, your word to yourself and that woke me up. I teared up a bit just thinking about this and I just want to start baby steps and really trying to rebuild trust with myself. I don't want to tell myself, hey, I'm going to do this and then just give up because that creates that habit of, of not expecting yourself to live up to your own expectations or you don't trust yourself to achieve what you set out to do and I don't want to build this kind of habit, I don't want to set myself up for failure and so I really am hoping this depth here will really help me for the first time build, start building that trust with myself. When I'm saying I'm going to buy only one deck or pay for only one deck before June, I'm going to do that. Of course, if I do find a loophole and I feel like it's reasonable, I'll do it but that, that baseline expectations should always be kept. Right now, I really bought the deck before June, the deck that I'm talking that I wanted to buy. And 
I'm happy to talk about it, why I made that choice. But um, maybe it's not right for this for this uh, video. Just let me know if you want to hear more about that. Okay, so I really hope this year, through this process of doing a depth year, I can start to build up my trust with myself again and really understand my word to myself and keep my words to myself and, and that would be how I can take myself to the next level and the next level and the next level. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a bit like semi-serious and it's not really have to it doesn't really have to do with any deck buying or tarot decks or oracle decks or my usual content. But I really felt like I needed to share with you why I'm doing a depth here. Let me know if you want to hear more about this, uh, you know, like, subscribe, it really helps me out. I'm not even kidding. Like I know Wanting validation is not really the most healthy thing, but it really helps to know that people do appreciate what I'm putting out there. Okay, you guys have a great rest of the day, you take care. Sending you all love. Bye!